Hello and welcome everybody. Uh, this is Devayan Sen. I'm a uh, senior assistant editor with ESPN India. I've also been a football commentator and multi-sport commentator in the past across a lot of mediums. And uh, I welcome you to the fourth session of this, uh, the uh, session on uh, making Delhi a vibrant football city on uh, Delhi Football Day. As it is, uh, it is the uh, birthday of Sunil Chetri and all our uh, best wishes to him and his entire family and his teammates, of course, who he has inspired through his performances over the past few years. Now, uh, this is a very, very critical session for us. And I'll just introduce the three theme and then our panelists. Uh, it's about commercial viability and opportunities in the city. Um, let's get down to the business things of uh, football, because at the end of the day, yes, there is a place for emotion. There is a lot of place for uh, all the uh, heart about football. But at the end of the day, it is also about business. It is also about making sure that there are sustainable models across everything. So um, just to introduce our uh, panel for today, um, we've got uh, Mr. Lloyd Mathias. Uh, I'll briefly introduce everybody. Uh, he's a business strategist and angel investor. And uh, they'll all get to speak for themselves once, once the questions begin. And I, I would urge them to then add any uh, gaps that I may have uh, omitted uh, during these introductions. We also have Mr. Tuhid Mishra, who's uh, the MD and co-founder of Baseline Ventures a company which has a huge presence across Indian sport with uh, their association with a lot of players and uh, sports as well. And the same can be said of Mr. Neerav Tomer, who is uh, the CEO and MD of iOS Sports and Entertainment. Uh, congratulations, Neerav. I just believe uh, 15 years have been completed of your company just recently. So Thanks, hey, congratulations on that. And we have Mr. Siddhant Narayan, uh, who's uh, the head of marketing of OnePlus. He's also been associated in the past as a former brand manager with Nike managed the Indian national team for three years and also been a project manager of the uh, under-15 Nike Manchester United Premier Cup, which was, of course, a flagship event for youth football in India. And speaking of youth football, of course, we also have all the way from uh, Frankfurt, uh, we have Mr. Per Norbert, who's the head of global marketing of Bundesliga International, definitely one of the most competitive leagues in the world and something which has a huge fan following in India. And it's only been steadily growing and he can, he can offer us a lot of insight about how to make football profitable from the Bundesliga experience. So welcome, gentlemen. Uh, this is a crucial uh, session because we are here, as, as I said right at the top, we are moving away from emotion of everything else. And we're going to ask some uh, hard questions and also get to some hard truths. And I would uh, urge all of you to be as candid as you can be because uh, that's the way that we'll hopefully find some solutions about all the problems that uh, face uh, Indian football or football at large. So uh, my first question goes, uh, I suppose, to uh, Lloyd uh, Mathias. Lloyd, uh, a very popular sport around the country, football. And uh, from, just from an industry perspective, how do you think is the best way to leverage it uh, if you were looking from a corporate uh, standpoint? Uh, thanks for that introduction, uh, Debayan. Uh, so my involvement with sport was uh, you know, largely in my uh, 12 odd years with Pepsi when I headed marketing. And Pepsi at that time obviously had a very active involvement with cricket. Uh, but much to many people's uh, you know, uh, uh, knowledge uh, or lack of knowledge was that Pepsi also deeply involved itself with hockey and uh, football to an extent, you know, sponsoring some tournaments. But obviously cricket was big ticket and you know, with the big sponsorships uh, with the ICC, the BCCI uh, and mega stars. That's what uh, you know, really got everyone's mind. I think the fundamental challenge in terms of attracting corporate sponsorships are two. I think one is really, you know, as a business, as a brand, you really want to go out there and really get people's attention and eyeballs, right? And therefore, width is very critical. Having said which, I think I clearly recognize right now that cricket is a very expensive sport, right? There are, I would say, at best about 20 brands that can take, you know, an association with cricket that makes it stick with consumer minds. Right? Because there are, everyone's throwing big monies. All the big cricket properties are kind of very heavily leveraged by top brands. So I think it's a great opportunity to round look outside of cricket at other sports. And if I would look at football per se, I think there are two parts. One is that you know all the football following, and it's a mass sport like anywhere else in the world. But uh, tragically, as it happens, almost all the football following for India is international. So people really follow, have their you know favorite leagues, the EPLs, the Bundesliga. La Liga, et cetera. So I think the challenge is how does one develop local football in a manner that becomes relevant and attracts people, right? And the moment you get a sizable following from, you know, for local leagues and local teams, I think that's when sponsors and the rest find it worth their while. Because one part of sponsorship is really buying people's attention through buying television time. 
but that's really a cold way of associating and really good brands don't just want to look at it in terms of buying advertising sponsorship but also buying a full fledged involvement which is when you can take your you know your you know do a promotion take your kind of fans to the grounds meet players so you're looking at that whole 360 degree approach and tragically as it seems right now football in india hasn't reached that critical mass right so it still remains you know a bulk of you know high net worth or you know people the higher social economics are following global leagues and uh, the indian football scenario you know as much as you know one has seen it evolve over the last few years hasn't been able to kind of attract big corporate money and big sponsors for the simple reason that it hasn't got down to reaching you know enough of a mass audience i think that is where the challenge lies i think it's a it's a good point you make and uh, i'll come to siddhant on that point uh, you know since you represent a global brand in many respects um and you have uh, experience of having worked with indian football in the past so the last few years have been good for indian football there has been a lot of progress in terms of eyeballs in terms of interest globally uh what do you think is still holding it back because uh, in many respects it is perhaps the number two sport in many uh, ways uh, kabaddi has also emerged as a front runner to challenge it behind cricket but uh, how does one uh, you know get used to this whole uh, conundrum that it is a big way behind cricket yet it is growing at a high uh, mass so how how would corporates uh, react to this and uh, associate want to associate with the game uh so th- thanks devan for you know uh, you know getting me part of this panel i'm actually pre- really happy and excited to be amongst this you know uh, esteemed panel members so i think it's a very fair question it's a very straight on point question uh, and i have experienced it from both sides right from very very closely from the grassroots and from a brand standpoint uh, i think the 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 number one thing that 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 I, i've always looked at or, or or that could probably help many brands is that you know when you kind of try and narrow down the gap between football and cricket i think it has to start from the consumer's mindset and the reason i'm saying that is because the one the one reality is that in a nation as as wide as india right uh, the youth right now are more of uh, more uh, have a higher affinity to football right so from a brand standpoint uh, when they are engaging with with with, with you no know, especially from a brand who who wants to connect with the youth of india right they need to tap into these these subcultures that 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 is around growing around football right and it's not just about going really big uh, it's not just about that it's also about how do you kind of t- tap into these subcultures and create that community engagement i feel that's one of the one of the things that 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 will probably create those differentiation between a, a sport like football and sport like cricket cricket obviously has been around for so many years got a mass appeal right but football in india is probably that sport that can create that fan culture and from a brand standpoint when you tap into that that mindset of the consumer i feel that will make one of the biggest differences uh, you know from a monetary standpoint as well not just from a fan base standpoint you know the the the, the 13 year old today has a greater affinity to 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 a chhetri or you know or to a ronaldo or to a messi uh, versus someone else so i think these are things that i think should be a good starting point from a brand standpoint yeah yeah it's a it's a good time for me to make a confession of a conflict of interest because even though i live in bangalore i'm an out and out delhi boy i've spent the first uh, 34 years of my life there so it's hard to kind of get that out of your system which is why 2015 and 2016 are probably my favorite isl seasons so talking purely about the capital city now delhi and i'll come to nirav uh, also because of your association in the past with the durand cup which was uh, perhaps one of the uh, epic events uh, in indian in indian in the indian football calendar and it was always associated with delhi for a long time so delhi has everything going for itself it is the power center in many respects it's got all the big industrial it's uh, it's got the big media houses it's got everything going for uh, a youth oriented uh, sort of sport like football so where do the challenges lie why has it still not been able to capitalize on all these uh, favorable conditions and you can tap into your experience as well to draw on the answer thanks uh, divayan and i would like to first of all congratulate uh, delhi football shaji and his team for making this uh, football summit happen in in this pandemic times uh, and uh, you know i would just like to give you a brief background i started ios in 2005 and we took position in boxing and in football because, you know of the mass appeal of these two sports and there was not even ipl that time um, you know in boxing we went i mean we were lucky with vijender and then uh, in 2006 we signed up with the defense services the durand cup it is the oldest football tournament in in in, in india i think and then third oldest in asia uh, very very prestigious it was you know our delhi platform Uh, to showcase the best talent of the country 
uh, to the people of uh, the capital of this uh, country, you know, and uh, we run this tournament for three years. We brought in ESPN to do it live for the first time. We got Oceans as, a, as, as, as the main title sponsor. There were several other sponsors involved in it. Three years, you know, down the line, we were still standing and struggling with, uh, you know, the key factor over here is about uh, the funds. And, and of course, the funds come through fan engagement. And, you know, I mean, as uh, Siddhant rightly pointed out, it is about at the end of the day, we have, you have to have the consumer in the center. Um, and, and, and for that, you need a lot, all the stakeholders and, and you know, coming together and creating a robust ecosystem. Uh, you know, Star, Star doesn't pay a right fee to ING and it's in a partnership with, uh, you know, the, the huge involvement of Reliance in it. So uh, sponsors were, you know, of course, waiting and watching till a time where, you know, there, there is more, more and more crowd coming into the stadium. We brought in the Delhi government to put up the floodlights. Uh, it was done by Dave Musco back in 2006. Uh, we were able to gather, you know, about seven, 8,000 people in a capacity of 18,000 uh, stadium. It was, it was efforts, whatever we could put in that time. And uh, beside that, we also acquired New Delhi Heroes. Okay, I'll just pick up from here because uh, we're just experiencing a little bit of disturbance at your end. So we, we, we've been part of Delhi football in and out for more than 14 years, I would say. Uh, okay, I think we've just lost the connection with uh, Neera but touch. Uh, so I'll, I'll come to you, Pair, uh, to get uh, an outsider's perspective on this as well. It's, it's an unusual situation, isn't it? Uh, the capital city, as of now, doesn't have a team in the top division of Indian football. Is it, uh, you know, something that you would expect from a country like India, which has uh, so many centers of sport? And it's not something that's common at all, because if you look at all the European countries, in many respects, you know, Italy... Spain, England, uh, some of the best best clubs tend to come from the capital city. So is there something which is perhaps missing from the Indian football experience, which which makes you believe that uh, there is that void which needs to be filled up? Thanks, Devayan. And uh, first and foremost, uh, thanks a lot to Football Daily for setting this up and uh, being on stage with this kind of uh, superstars in terms of uh, Indian uh, uh, sports business. Um, coming back to a question. Um, I would say the interesting part here is that we can draw a comparison between Germany and India. I mean, they're, they're, in general, there aren't so many uh, similarities, but uh, Germany used to have, uh, in German Bundesliga, we also used to have a situation in which there was no club from the German capital. Uh, when Hertha Berlin was relegated twice, there were situations in which, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest city in Germany and the capital was not uh, represented with the, with the Bundesliga club. And I would say, Obviously, there was something missing um, uh, from, from, from a football and from a capital uh, perspective. And especially, I think, from a perspective um, uh, from, the, from the city itself. Because, um, I mean, uh, when you look into uh, uh, European top leagues, I think football clubs are a big uh, tourist attraction. So uh, that people really come, and come, come to the capital, visit the capital and, and, and attend uh, one or, or even more games in order to experience uh, football in, in, in that particular city. And uh, that was definitely, the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, a disadvantage for Berlin uh, back, back in the days. But um, I, I would say if, if, if you look at, um, let's say, Delhi and the ISL from, a, from an external, from an outsider perspective, I would say um, it's in terms of football development, um, obviously, if, if you are not represented in, in the capital, uh, you're lacking something but it's not only I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that's a major concern or it's 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 it's, it's a major uh, failure or, or problem issue uh, because um, I think it's not so much about the uh, the, the venues and the, the cities you're playing in. it's much more about the let's say in general the, the situation the state of the league the players etc and then uh, hopefully one day uh, there will also be an, uh, a, a club representing Delhi um, uh, in the ISL uh, and uh, it is it is definitely key and it's very important, but I would say it's not the most important part. Uh, coming to you, Tuhin, uh, uh, just picking up from that point of pair and also from something that was discussed in the previous panel discussion, which was about media coverage of football. 
i think uh, one point which was made in that uh, session also was that uh, there needs to be something for the media to be able to cover there need there need to be more matches there need to be more uh, prominent visible leagues now purely from your association with indian sport like how difficult is it going to be to be able to get sponsors on board to support delhi football in the absence of all of that i mean which one comes first does the sponsor first need to be patient and take take a look at this as a long term a plan rather than something which will give them returns on a shorter term so he i think you need to unmute Thanks, Devan, for having me uh, as part of the panel and to the Delhi Football uh, Association as well. Uh, so, just to kind of quickly give you a background in terms of our association or my association with Indian football or football in general. So, we've been part of you know through my journey of in, into sports, sports marketing, have been in part of uh, you know when I used to be, be with IMG, then Focus Sports Asia. So, we used to work very closely with Churchill Brothers actually, and we even tried. Uh, uh, to do a stake sale of Churchill Brothers at that point in time, 50% stake sale, and I'm talking about way back in 2009, 2010, uh, and uh, with a Portuguese uh, actually club. Uh, so, and we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, you know, when these discussions happen around sponsorship, uh, because we were also involved with the FIFA Under-17 World Cup. We got them six sponsors and everything, and uh, we were also managing the Liverpool Football Club, their licensing business in India for uh, three years at baseline. Uh, what we see a very uh, common phenomena with most of the sponsors are that a lot of these relationships are uh, very transactional. There are very few sponsors who have a long-term vision. And in that aspect, I must credit Hero for that because they've been there uh, supporting Indian football for, for, for a while now. And uh, if you just get into the ROI calculations with a lot of sponsors really get into right from day one, that, that can never kind of meet your expectations. And we know it for a fact. It has to be a long haul association. Uh, a lot of times sponsors look for that because sometimes, or I would say most of the times, uh, someone who comes on board of a sport, invariably it's a, like an offshoot of cricket. So they would have test, uh, tasted success with cricket. Now, but the cricket matrix are very different. You now you get almost instant result. You associate with IPL, you associate with Indian cricket or some honest sponsorship. Where you do your media agency will do an evaluation and tell you, oh, you got these many GRPs, it's a success or it's a failure, whatever. Uh, but you get almost like an in, in, uh, instant gratification. In football, we see it, it does not happen. Uh, and that's where the challenges are because uh, you need to have that patience as a sponsor. And we don't see that most of the times. Uh, and that's why I said, I mean, even if you see today as football as a sport in our country, Apart from Hero, Maruti, there's just a handful of them. And, uh, and as Lloyd was saying earlier, you know, if uh, I would say an intelligent marketer who's there probably can use this as an opportunity to really kind of uh, you know, break the clutter and try and do something which can make them stand out at probably a fraction of a cost what they do for cricket per se. But again, uh, you know, it's a lot of times those are marketing calls and ROI calls, which Sometimes or a lot of times we cannot change that. Yeah, um, thanks, gentlemen, for your opening comments. Uh, now it is pretty much an open floor, so I, I'll ask questions, but you feel free to you know follow up with with your own comments as well. I'll come to Lloyd with the next question, and again picking up from uh, what Tuhin just mentioned. So, in many respects, the actual uh, flux of in, in of uh, investment needs to happen at the grassroots level because that is where the champions of tomorrow are built. But that is something which has to be a long-term vision. It's not something which will give you uh, instant results in one year or two years or even five years. It's something that has to be looked at probably as a 20 or a 30 year project. So uh, how, how difficult is that going to be to get corporates to you know, buy into the unglamorous side of youth development? Or what can a football association do to make that more uh, credible in many respects? Uh, great question, Debayan. And just you know, taking off from uh, you know, what Tuhin mentioned, uh, and possibly bringing to bear something uh, in terms of what, what Germany has done and what Pair mentioned. I think there are two aspects to it. One is really looking at it as a 10, 20 year vision, which means, you know, let's say the Delhi Football Association, along with the All India Football Federation, possibly with the government, and hopefully with one or two long term committed sponsors willing to look at, you know, developing football on a longer term basis. 
right? This means really putting a grassroots program in place, starting from the school level, the neighborhood level. It's really about building that whole talent pipeline that you, that you groom. And which better place to look at or which better sport to look at than cricket, right? What we've all done. I mean, you know, I grew up in Mumbai, much like you did in Delhi, Dubai. And, you know, one of the reasons why Bombay, you know, won, I think, 30 odd uh, Ranji trophies together was there were two tournaments that really were the grassroots. You know, one was called the Tanga League, right, which was neighborhood clubs, right? So more than 700 clubs in the city of Bombay, or, uh, Bombay as it was called there in Mumbai now, actually participated in the Kanga League. That typically ran right through the monsoon. It started in June and ended in the first week of uh, the last week of September, right? So it was, you know, playing in horrendous conditions, but clubs got used to the fact that Sunday mornings, uh, you know, get into your cricketing gear, go out to the field, play. If it rains, the match gets called off, or you play it till such time as the, as the ground holds. Similarly, there was the Time Shield, right, which had at one time more than 400 corporates, right? So all kinds of businesses. So even there were Sunday players who got out and played. So I think similarly, football needs a deep-rooted grassroots level. And that might mean, mean sponsors taking a long-term commitment. On the other side, as someone who spent you know, most of my career in the corporate world, I also recognize that CEOs are now on a short time span, right? You, know, you have a couple of two bad quarters and uh, the analysts are questioning your existence, right? And two bad years and you know, your history. So it's difficult for a lot of businesses to look at you know, sport sponsorship returns uh, beyond a one-year cycle. Right? So there's a bit of a challenge. So I think someone will need to bridge the gap, maybe the government to some extent, but really putting the building blocks in place. And I think for that, you know, my, my view is that Delhi football per se with the IFF have to actually start a kind of grassroots event. One is at the school's level. Two is possibly get a lot of corporates playing you know, weekend soccer, week, you know, weekday soccer, maybe five a side, but getting that whole football culture going. And third is making available a whole lot of places. I mean, you've seen some of Delhi schools have very fancy playgrounds, but when the school is shut, no one can use them, right? And my point is, you know, post 5 p.m., door open to the neighborhood. I mean, there's just so much of, you know, good soccer that needs reasonable playing conditions. You can't play on concrete. A lot of our cities struggle. So I think it's a three-way part. It's, uh, you know, the powers that be within the football associations, the Delhi football, the AIFF, uh, maybe the Ministry of Sports and some government body, and possibly three or four enlightened corporates that are willing to you know, put some skin in the game, saying, hey, we're going to do this for, you know, for the city that we work in. And, and Delhi has, you know, possibly India's biggest corporates. I think that is the approach that will actually help resurrect and bring football to a level where, you know, people would really want to take a look. And I would just say one more point is that I think what's happened over the last 30 odd years and uh, is that, you know, football in India has lost out because of the sheer exposure of television, right? When you see global sports, when you see the best leagues in the world, suddenly Indian football doesn't match up, right? I was told by my, you know, my, my, my folks, my parents and such like that back in the 50s, 60s and 70s, Indian football still had a sizable following, right? Because the only time we saw international football was possibly a World Cup game, whereas Indian football still did. And, you know, some of you know that in 1962, India won the Asian Games gold in football, beating South Korea. Uh, in the 56 Olympics, India beat Australia uh, you know, in a football game. So I think there was a history around the 50s, 60s. But you know, everything, ever since we got exposed to you know, global football, the best in the world, suddenly a lot of local soccer seems you know, pale in, in significance. So like I said, Devayan, I think it's a few enlightened corporates at the government. It's the football association that will get together and really look at a 15, 20, 20 year transformation vision that can help uh, you know, resurrect the sport and make it mainstream. It's a good point you make the reconciliation of uh, Indian football versus uh, global brands, but we'll come to that in a short while. I'll come to you next, uh, Neera. Uh, from a city-based football organization perspective, what are the kind of brands which you see fitting into the narrative which can you know support Football Delhi in a big way and why? Uh, first of all, you know I would uh, like to endorse uh, Lloyd's uh, you know thoughts and comments on on the whole ecosystem which has to you know come together and, and build. Uh, Delhi football and I think a major part which has to be played is by the Delhi government you know I don't see I don't know if in this entire uh, edition we have anybody from the Delhi government and that's where you know uh, Delhi Dynamos has has also shifted base to Odisha because there was a red carpet uh, for uh, a football club uh, from from the capital and now we're left with uh, not, a, not a club in the ISL uh, you know, before I talk about any brand getting involved in it or are there any brands uh, which would like to, you know, partner with Delhi football, 
we need to create a platform or a vehicle you know where people of delhi can associate can get engaged uh, you know with a high quality product first of all i mean we already have I, I, and and i would not agree to the point that there is uh, uh, happening there is enough grassroots level activities there are enough academies i think there are some 80 academies i, I was listening to uh, the panel discussion before this uh, there are enough good academies in fact I, uh, you know i mean even barcelona uh, barca is, is also also there um, there is there are enough corporate football tournaments which are already happening in delhi but nobody is ready to associate themselves with delhi football or a delhi football club that's what happened with delhi dynamos um, the, the stadiums are empty i don't know why the decision was taken to you know host delhi dynamos at uh, jawala nehru stadium in a, in a stadium where there is no spectator experience that is again uh, you know something which is very very important to engage fans in it uh, i would come to the point of of brands looking at getting interested at the end of the at the end of the day you need fan engagement and you need people and you need eyeballs uh that's why any brand would like to get associated as of now i don't see a platform i don't see the you know a good enough tournament even durand cup is not happening or or you know not, not enough international matches to showcase to delhi where delhi football can have brand associated with the calendar saying okay we're going to have india matches we're going to have isl matches we're going to have our own delhi uh, a, a robust delhi league you know wherein uh, it's is a franchise model i think there is a there is a huge amount of revamping which has to happen even at the local league level because there is no fan engagement it used to be there you know because we run a football club new delhi heroes which was uh, you know it's, it's a 1939 club and and what i've heard is that it used to be packed stadiums uh, back in the days so so i think we we need to uh, delhi football has to has to get the government involved get the corporates involved and and corporates will only come when they can see a 10 year or 20 year program which lloyd mentioned about i mean it has to be Uh, to do with a long term vision there is not going to be any kind of roi for a brand to come in at the moment to see okay you know uh, i'm going to get uh, these kind of ratings probably uh, on uh, the digital platform what delhi football has introduced or um, um, you know these are the kind of people who are going to come to the stadium which does not exist right now so i think uh, there has to be a huge amount of efforts by every stakeholder for brands to start get uh, getting engaged in it the bayan if i could yeah. just come in for a small point just to react yeah. i think neera great point and if i may add i think when i talked about the ecosystem about the government about a few enlightened sponsors and the association i think a key element i also forgot was the media and and to the point neera made neera uh, you know back in the early 2000 to 2003 or so i used to head marketing at pepsi and we had sponsored the durand cup right and we were guilt tripped into sponsoring it because you know you know the you know the then you know it is the durand cup is a, is a, is an army or a military owned thing and the you know, chief of army staff you know met our country head and said look you guys spend millions on cricket can you give us a small amount of money so we did that and then we went there and you know try to do our you know you know the, the usual stuff that pepsi does you know run promotions do the billboards and there wasn't even a media sponsor right and you recognize that any sponsor looks at any sport in two ways one is the number of people you get into the ground so that's your your physical eyeball and then the media amplification right i can have 5000 spectators in the ground but if i have 5 million on television you know i get some roi and there was no one willing to spawn, uh, to to telecast the durand cup right so we went hunting for sponsors and you know it was a futile exercise that's not our business our business was selling soft drinks so i think therefore it's important to get media involved and to my mind the premier kabaddi league is a classic case right you get a great you know a big a big television network backing a tournament and suddenly kabaddi gets watched and it gets into middle class homes and people are watching it and then the quality of coverage is great the graphics are great that builds a sport so i think also importantly is to get good media coverage good quality right so when people want to watch a soccer game they want to see the same level of telecast they're watching the bundesliga right they don't want to see a one camera handheld operation right that's going to you know cheese them off so i think therefore media also is a critical part and therefore i want to make that point thank you yeah as a like, media uh, just Sorry, one sir. point on this you know i mean i think uh, at the end of the day you know we have a football culture here in delhi and that culture is totally skewed towards uh, european football you know it it's towards the the german clubs or, or the english clubs so people are following and see i mean it's it's but obvious like if i have got a remote control in my bedroom and and you know i have just one button away to watch a bundesliga game or a you know epl game and an isl game i mean by such huge efforts by reliance i mean it's very unfortunate that 
uh, I think the campaign was also not done in the right fashion. I mean, getting a Del Piero for nine, nine crore rupees in the first season instead of spending nine crores in a campaign, which could have been huge to get you know fan engagement over there and not buying uh, you know media activation plans into it. So I'm just I'm just saying that th there have been uh, flaws, of course. I mean, in terms of uh, various uh, stakeholders, but you know, at, at the end of the day, if, if the quality of football is not good, if the quality of product is not good. Your consumer, why will the consumer consume it? So we have to build at the end of the day, again, it comes back to a 10 year plan or a 20 year plan because it goes to the grassroots. It goes to the quality of footballers. It goes to how football is played and viewed in terms of television or on ground. And then everything follows, you know, brands follow, broadcasting rights follows, uh, fan ready to invest. I mean, we've got two crore people, you know, for peers uh, knowledge, there, there are 20 million people in, in New Delhi. Imagine one dollar each from say 60% of the or 40% of the population in, in having a club from Delhi participate at ISL level and, and it's people's club. This is what happens in community engagement in, in, in Europe. You know, a friend of mine, he owned Portsmouth and I saw the kind of uh, involvement, uh, you know, the community had. They used to invest by the, they used to contribute, you know, I, I mean, 100 pounds to 1000 pounds because of the kind of association they had. Another thing what we lack is, I think, uh, belongingness. You know, I mean, Delhi is a, is, a, is a cosmopolitan. And then you look at what, uh, you know, Goa has as a culture, Kerala, Northeast. So people basically say, ye, you know, this is my city. Hai. And, and, and even if the quality of football is, is, is not at a top level, you'll find full stadium. So there has to be a, a, a sponsor who's ready to invest with the, with the government or Delhi. And you have a brilliant campaign, you know, uh, which can be built like people like us or Tuhin, you know, I mean, who, 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 who can show sponsors to Siddhant, you know, to how to, how to get uh, return on investment in the next three to five years. It's not going to happen over six months or one year. Uh, Tuhin, you're on mute. To add, uh, Deva, and yeah, yeah. what Deirav and Lloyd was kind of alluding to, was uh, at the end of the day, a lot of the following and fan engagement and all those things that we talk about happens with success. So as they say, right, success follows success. So while we can have a 10-year program or a 10-year vision, five-year, whatever that X uh, number of years, we also have to show some, something which is happening. And we've seen it, and I'll give you an example also, was we were involved with the volleyball, volleyball league. And uh, again, it's a classic example. It's very similar to the state of volleyball and football in India. Right? The popular sports at grassroots levels, people play, there are different pockets in the country, you know, which follows. And what we were trying to do, it was an unfortunate thing that we had a kind of a rundown with the federation as always, you know, some things are successful and then things kind of go in a different direction. But leaving that aside, uh, what we feel is that if we can look at certain things that what Kabaddi happened. Now, see, if you see Kabaddi, Again, it's a very limited sport played in the country at a, you know, at a certain level. It is still not aspirational. But yes, because of the whole media weight which was put behind it, it kind of obviously started delivering numbers and everything. But smartly, what they also did was they started playing countries at an international level. They did a Kabaddi World Cup, right? Now, it is basically 50% was Indians or NRIs playing from, from those countries as well. Now, if you start planning those kind of stuff where India can go and play, yes, India cannot play a Germany, India cannot play a, a Portugal or France, but they can play against some countries where you start building kind of a fan following. And again, this is not kind of restricted to Delhi Football Association. It is, has to be done at an All India Football uh, uh, Association level. But the state units cannot be functioning also as silos because a lot is going to depend as what football at a at a national level is being planned and then you know you start getting the benefits of it at a state level yeah. that's one secondly we need to start building how do i say uh, uh marquee players or all the guys whom people can really associate at a state level at a delhi level now today if even if i'm based on gurgaon and obviously we all have affinity to delhi i don't have a a, a, a fan or a fan of the set. i don't have a uh how do i say a, 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 key, icon. Yeah, a key player whom I can follow or I can be proud of. Then suddenly I am doing a campaign for my own club and I bring a Jacqueline Fernandez. I have no connect. I am happy to see Jacqueline Fernandez doing an item number or a movie, this thing. 
but I have no connect with that. So there are issues at a level which needs to be addressed. So those are monies which can be spent uh, to kind of uh, obviously build that fan engagement, but also we need to create those stars. You know, India cannot survive on a Bechum Bhutia and a Sunil Shetri. I mean, it is an issue. I mean, this country cannot just have two players. See, we are talking about a team sport. So I need minimum of 15 guys there who are really good, not 15, at least 11. If it was an individual sport, yes, I have a Sindhu. She can go and win a medal for you. Or a Saina Neva can go and win a medal for you. But when you're talking about a team sport, then it has to be a much more collective effort. You need to have solid 11, 15 guys there who can actually do something for you. And that's yeah. what the issue is. Yeah, that's a very valid point and we'll, we'll just uh, talk about that with Siddhant in just a bit. But before that, uh, among all the issues that we discussed, one which uh, Lloyd had mentioned, which I'll put to pair, was about how uh, global football tends to sometimes cannibalize the, the potential uh, viewership of local football as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming since you're you know, involved in global marketing of Bundesliga, you might face a similar challenge perhaps with the English Premier League, which is uh, marketed in many ways. To, to an extent which no other you know, in, international league can as yet match up to. So what are the ways that you can work around that and how would you be able to sell that to, uh, say, a football Delhi if they want to sell their local football? How, how should they approach it? What are the things that they should uh, need to focus on? Thanks, Tabayan. Um, before I come uh, back to your question, I would like to um, uh, outline a few thoughts uh, which have been raised already because I, I pretty much, I think 99% of what was said beforehand, uh, I can 100% I can agree. And uh, I mean, uh, Tohin, you just pointed it out uh, that there needs to be a, a kind of, a, let's say, a group of around about 15 players who, have, who are on a competitive level. And, and I, I would never disagree. However, I would say if there are one or two, let's say, national icons, the rest is coming. The rest is following because if you have those kind of role models and then front runners, and th those role models can uh, serve as um, as um, idols for kids, and, and and they are exposed the right way uh, through media, in stadium, etc., then this this definitely helps. And I would say, uh, especially when, when when we look into our global marketing activities, uh, it's always important. Let's say from 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 the other way around that uh, from from a Bundesliga perspective that we have a local that we have a local hero. So for example, when Bayern Munich signed Sapreet Singh, who is not even Indian, he's, he, he has a, a New Zealand passport, but we could see so much traction on our social handles from uh, Indian media and, and uh, not only us, but also FC Bayern as a club, that it seems like that there's such a big hunger uh, or appetite for for a local. Um, I mean, he's not even local, but for, for, for someone who could uh, uh, maybe have an impact to to the to the uh, Indian um, football development. Even though he's not Indian at all, at all. he has an Indian uh, he has an Indian name. So th that was really, let's say, surprising to us that there's a, a, a certain connection. Um, then um, I think it was uh, Niraf who said that it's very important that the clubs take over, um, let's say, social responsibility for their for their communities. 100% agreed. And if I look, uh, let's, I mean, you know, football is just in a total different state in Germany and in, in across Europe uh, compared to India. But if I look, what, what, what really makes uh, clubs, uh, uh, I can only speak for Germany, but what, what makes it really successful here and why we have uh, three quarters of the total population are interested in Bundesliga and, and football, it's because the clubs play such a heavy role in for for the local communities. They're offering much more than you know every other week uh, a match day. They're also offering offering so many grassroots activities, so many kids development, so many even other sports. You know, usually a club like an average Bundesliga club that doesn't only offer uh, uh, mass participation football, but only offers uh, uh, on, also offers tennis. Kingpin bowling, table tennis, squash, you, you name it. You, you usually have like 10, 20 different sports under this umbrella of, of, of the big club. Obviously not at the same level, not on a professional level most of the times, but uh, uh, are kind of a go-to go -to, uh, piece for the communities and, uh, not, and, and football not only for the professional men's, but also for, uh, often for women, sometimes professional, sometimes not professional, but also a, a, a place where, where, where girls and, and, and young uh, ladies can, can, uh, can mingle to play soccer and also uh, for, 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 for kids and even uh, grown-ups. So for example, uh, there are several clubs 
we have you know the first men's team but up to a eighth or ninth men's men's team which play somewhere you know somewhere in 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 the nowhere uh, region or area but even they, they carry the logo and are super proud so this helps a lot and dramatically to build your your your, your local brand and then i think lloyd said something about the media experience 100 agreed um that's uh, it, it's 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 very important to be uh, you know in 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 on tv or on screen at the right time uh with, with the right commentators in the right uh, with the right studio show with the right right shoulder programming um but and i would like to add here it's not only about the media experience because sometimes if you are um um if i mean if you look at other leagues in europe for example who have maybe a, a great quality of the game but uh if, if, if you're broadcast and there are in a i don't know 40 40 000 capacity stadium six thousand people then even for 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 someone who consumes in front of the tv it's not very let's say compelling so therefore it's also about the in stadium experience and this can only be uh great if you if you can uh, attract uh, enough people enough uh, you know a, a great average of people you know some in the vip boxes but also many people in the standing areas you know doing great typhoons are responsible for the for the for the atmosphere and then the, then as a whole the whole football experience makes it very compelling for the media consumer in front of the tv or from 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 abroad or from somewhere else but also for the players you know and then it's all kind of an ecosystem which builds upon each other and uh, if if you have great experiences then players come players enjoy to 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 grow etc cetera, etc cetera. so but then uh, coming coming back to a question divian uh, what what uh, how, how do we position let's say ourselves uh, when it comes to local football development um uh, when i look at my research we pretty much apart from india there aren't many other markets where the national or the local league doesn't play a major role which is so that that's something very specific to india because even in 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 markets like uh, i don't know mexico japan uh, even indonesia or somewhere you know across the globe uh, south africa the, the 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 national league always ranks always first always and then you know then most of the times you have the premier league and then you have you know Uh, Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A, you know, they, they're all, let's say, uh, uh, competing for the, let's say, third rank. And, you know, uh, in, in each market, there's, uh, it's always a bit different, but at this, in general, they're at the same level uh, across the globe. And um, I would say, so for us, um, and I know that, that uh, uh, let's say, um, our, our friends from La Liga do it slightly different, and that's completely fine. I don't want to, you know, let's say that they do it wrong or there's a wrong or right. But, um, for example, they, they say we're going to play a, a La Liga game in, in, in the US. Well, we would say we, we would never ever do that because we, we, we would never ever be an aggressive conqueror to a local market. Rather, we, we want to grow together. We want to grow the football together. And again, it's not about, let's say, it, this, this is right, this is wrong. It's, it's just a different strategy. And um, th therefore, I would say or w w when we try to grow Bundesliga brand abroad, it's all about obviously trying to grow our brand but in 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 a in a friendly manner we would never like to take to 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 take over um and we try to work as much as we can with local authorities with local uh, um football authorities or even sometimes with 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 the, with the local government or regional governments and uh, and therefore i mean i also know that uh, many leagues um try to uh, uh, sign as many uh, memorandum of understandings as possible and then you know run around globally and say hey we have signed another memorandum of understandings and, and i know that the bundesliga doesn't have so many uh, uh memorandum of understandings Ma maybe because we are germans and we are not like like you know pr driven people we are more like because what, what we sign we try to deliver on and and therefore w when we sign something we try really our best to to, to deliver on on, on those uh, activities and uh, therefore we also in discussions with the uh, in indian authorities in order to um help growing uh, growing uh, football in india but also in in, in other markets and um, depending on the state we are in and, and not talking about india but in other states or in other countries uh, it's it's quite successful i know that's always a little bit it's it's a thin line because on the one hand it's about hey here are the, the, the the you know the great germans we show you how to develop football that's not how how, how you can be successful at the other hand if if you need to let's say you need to you need to you need to combine the local uh, situation with some i would say european or german or whatever it is spanish english whatever spice so you, you need you need to explain how 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 we do it but you must never forget what the local situation looks like 
So therefore, you need to have people on the other side who also understands, let's say, European football and uh, can uh, translate it into, into the local uh, uh, situation. And then if you do it hand in hand, if you do it with a, with a let's say, joint understanding of each other, then I think you can be very successful. And then you can build something which is a, a great grassroots program because that's, and I, I think almost everyone in, in this group said something about a 10 year vision, a 10 year plan. And this is exactly how you can, how you can do it because th there's no way to build football uh, ecosystem within two or three years. And this is my last comment, I promise. Uh, when, when, when we hit rock bottom in the early 2000s, I mean, rock bottom from a German perspective, but it was our rock bottom in terms of quality when, 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 when we got uh, dismissed in the, in the Euro 2004 uh, uh, in, the, in the group stage. And everybody said that in Germany, everybody was completely destroyed and said, okay, our, our football is completely you know, at zero. Uh, then what happened then? Um, the, the, the German association together with the league, together with the German uh, federation, uh, sorry, the federation, um, uh, with the German government sat together and said, how, how, what can we do? And then the idea was born of, um, of um, uh, youth um, development centers or youth academies. And I mean, this is not, I, I would say probably 80, 90% of all markets today have this kind of, let's say, idea. And it's, it was not completely invented by us. But it was kind of a, in a, it was it was set up in a kind of a structured way in a pyramid with, with the top with the DFB with our German Football Association at the, at the at the top with all the Bundesliga and second Bundesliga clubs uh, underneath and today all our clubs uh, if if you want to receive a license to play first or second Bundesliga you need to have certain requirements for your youth academy and therefore there's um, um, when we started this and when the, the, this was set up, I would say that was the basement for the um, for the World Cup uh, title back in 2014. And again, and we see we see this coming in, 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 in kind of waves, you know, um, because I would say our uh, World Cup um, performance back in 2018 was maybe not, let's say, that great, like compared to 2014. So, so the, the, you know, you always see it in coming and going in cycles, um, but you need to have a solid basement. Sorry. Yeah. So the only thought which uh, entered my mind as you began your comment was that we are having so many agreements. If we were on an Indian, you know, mainstream news uh, media organization, this would be our first and last debate because everybody is <laughs> agreeing with everybody. So um, coming to you, Siddhant, next, uh, some very valid points and very valid issues raised there. I think I'll pick up on what Tuhin also mentioned, the fact that, uh, you know, cricket has always had its generation of superstars. In many respects, though, the you know money into cricket really came in the 1980s once you had the Kapil Devs and Sunil Gavaskars. After that, you had the Sachin Tendulkar era. Uh, you had you know uh, Saurav Ganguly following after. You had MS Dhoni. You've had Virat Kohli. Now football has had its superstars as well. In many respects, Sunil Chetri, the man to whom this day is uh, dedicated, is the biggest of them all at the moment in Indian football. But purely from a media person's perspective, I think uh, we are sometimes a little unfair to some of his colleagues because many of them have put in some stellar performances as well. I mean, two names which immediately come to my mind are uh, Gurpreet Singh Sandhu, the goalkeeper, and Sandesh Jingan in central defence. Uh, I was present for all of India's games at the AFC Asian Cup. I thought the two of them were easily India's best players, ahead of Chetri even, even though he scored a couple of goals. So purely from uh, somebody who handles a brand's perspective, how do you build up these icons? Because uh, naturally in football, there is a tendency to go for the goal scorer, right? So how, how does a brand imagine uh, a campaign around somebody like a goalkeeper or a defender and how much of a challenge is it? No, I, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, I'm going to actually answer it in, in, in a few parts, right? I think before uh, i think i think a brand taking a standpoint right on on putting the the player ahead of the sport that's probably not the best way to do it especially for a team sport right so you have to kind of put that put the team in, in the beginning and then you're going to trail with the sport uh, the first thing i think that that from a brand standpoint uh, you probably look at is that what is the positioning of the sport overall in in, in a nation like india in, in particular right i mean right now it's 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 at a very I mean, it's going through a really nice transition. I mean, the national team is starting to do well. You know, if you look at a pyramid point of view, the national team is doing well. It's starting to translate the downwards, right? But 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 it all starts with what is the positioning of the sport? Is it still overtly premium, overtly niche, overtly cult, or is it becoming mainstream? Right. That becomes the starting point of of the of, from the other side, right? If it is getting mainstream, then your strategy will be very different. And the reality is that today, I mean, I was looking at some statistics with, uh, over the weekend. Like 32% of of the youth right now. They, they aspire to be a footballer. 
than a cricketer. It's a great sign, and, and that's where you need to pick this up from. So I mean, so from a from a uh, consumer from a brand standpoint, you have to identify whether whether the team ma mandate works better. What is the objective, right? And what is the objective the brand is trying to solve for? Is it to create a feeling of belongingness? Is it to create a feeling of uh, you know of of of, uh, of pure fan culture? Or is it that they want to engage with their consumers through digital content, irrespective? There are three different objectives. So if if it's for example creating a feeling of belongingness, I think this panel has actually spoken extensively about it. I'm completely in alignment with with their with their philosophies. Uh, the only addition from my side is that when you're looking at now when it comes to the mix that you want to create for the consumer, right? You know that the like even even I was looking at the ISL, right? The consumption of ISL is very very high in India. Uh, so if you want to create that kind of engagement. It also comes down to how you use a Sandeep Jingan or or, or a Gurpreet or or a Sunil or the entire team in in in, prob in 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 probably ways that the consumer wants to engage with. Is it a digital point of view, right? Because because or, or is you, or, or do you want to go back to you know the 2000s when when you did the you know uh, when the South African rugby team did an entire lap around the country, right? That's probably not the way to do it right now anymore, right? But so you have to kind of serve content in shorter formats to these consumers. And then create, and then you work around the objective, right? So apart, so and and all of this comes down to like the media mix, right? What is it the media mix that we're looking for? Is 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 I are you are you looking at uh, mainstream advertising or are you looking at uh, you know digital? So my personal experience in the recent past when I look at football is that if you have a good mix of you know I think if you have a one player concept like uh, you know then it's probably better for a community level. Uh, but if you have a, a multi three or four player concept, which which a brand is backing them up for, then probably it's it's better to evoke national pride. That's probably a better combination, uh, you know, versus an individualistic point of view. Uh, you can definitely use, uh, you know, Gurpreet in 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 his home market or Sunil in, in Delhi, you know. So that always will work. But I think right now is the is that beautiful transition towards creating football as a mainstream sport. And that I feel is 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 something that that brand should be tapping on. So yeah, that's that's basically my. Comment. Yeah, I think it's a great point which Siddhant makes, and that's my next question in a way to all the panelists about uh, the importance of digital media. Before that, I'll I'll just give you a little bit of background about what we have experienced at ESPN India. Um, from all the sports that we do, maybe about 90 to 95 percent of our traffic tends to come from football purely. So that that outstrips everything. It outstrips cricket. It outstrips NBA. It outstrips Formula One. All of those, of course, peak when when there is an event. But football is something that's pretty much 24/7, 365 days a year. And further within that, we have found that there is an appetite for Indian football. When we do Indian football stories, they get read. They get good traction. We just carried a uh, a feature, a couple of features over the weekend about the East Bengal centenary, and each one had more than 2,000 uh, uh, page views on a on a specific days, which during these pandemic times is actually quite outstanding, just purely in terms of numbers. So picking up from that, uh, and I'll come to you, Nirav, because you've given me a couple of great throwbacks. The the Dave Musco lighting and the Ambedkar Stadium brings me back memories of like you know the two. Nehru Cups, which we covered at Z Sports 2007 and 2009. And of course, New Delhi Heroes had my personal hero, Chima Okori, as a coach at one point of time. So that, that's a great memory as well. So since you have you know, dabbled in, in uh, the broadcast side of things as well in trying to market the Durant Cup in the past, so how can you see digital media playing a role in promoting local football? Because it is a product which perhaps doesn't have the glitz and glamour of international or even national club level football, but it is something that can get you some uh, awareness uh, definitely of the sports at uh, grassroots level. So uh, I think uh, digital media is a you know shot in the arm for uh, you know anything to do with now community and and localized uh, sports content uh, creation or, or or live you know I mean now because of digital media we can have uh, I mean Delhi football I think so has their own channel a YouTube channel and uh, you can reach to people through their uh, mobile phones or the television and i think this was uh, of course i mean unheard or you know we could not even think about this 10 years back um, so and 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 to do with that i think fantasy gaming has put in another shot in the arm because over here what what happens is is about fan engagement so you have uh, fantasy gaming because i mean i'm not too of, I, mean, I mean an expert onto that field but i can just see the kind of Involvement of people, and especially in cricket, and and in the mainstream football matches, where you know it's it's more like a predict to win, 
I mean, because of the analytics of, of all the players. So if you have, if you have, a, say, a Delhi league, you know, uh, available live on on digital uh, medium, uh, you know, packaged well with, of course, the, the fantasy players who are quite uh, aggressive these days. Uh, there could be a lot of engagement, and, and, and the digital media has shown a, shown a new light, I think, for uh, for uh, you know localized sports content that way. I mean, uh, looking at uh, what uh, we are doing in terms of what, what, or what's key for us in terms of uh, brand development, no matter if it's domestically or, or internationally, uh, uh, social and, 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 and content through social media or even through our own uh, channels is key. Because that's, I mean, Niraf, you said it, and it's, it's obvious, but it's a scalable solution to uh, reach as many people as possible which was not possible 10 or 15 years ago. And uh, I mean, you can you can put it in a, in a positive or a negative way, what I would say, and we can tell our story about it. So um, uh, we, we can we can uh, let people experience what, what, the, what the special experience about or what the special Bundesliga feeling is about. Um, and in the past, we were always relying on, you know, a, a third party media, be it like uh, uh, media partners or uh, uh, print media. And I would never say that this is something which is bad, not at all. And we still do it. I mean, we're still heavily relying on, on, on third party medias. However, uh, I think we, we, we can help um, people to experience Bundesliga uh, through our own channels. And that, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's key, that's important. And uh, for me, it's kind of a hygiene factor because uh, I, you, you, can't, you can't grow a brand without it anymore nowadays. Yeah, and obviously, the, just to add to this, Digital media per se definitely is uh, important. Uh, and uh, if you see Facebook going and buying the rights, right, uh, which is the uh, the Spanish football rights, right, uh, and obviously paying crazy amount of money for it, uh, obviously they they must have done their own numbers as well that why they're going into it. Uh, now it's a different story that, you know, their plans have also changed because they probably realized that they might have overpaid and a lot of things are also now happening at a back end. But the fact of the matter is that they know when your, your TG, your target audience is actually youth uh, and they are consuming so much on our digital uh, space or a digital platform that this becomes an obviously a very effective way of reaching out to them. Uh, that is one. Secondly, just to add to Nirav's thing uh, with respect to fantasy, uh, since we've actually, as a, as a firm, we've dabbled a bit into fantasy because of uh, the various work that we do. We actually did a fantasy, uh, this thing for a, created a platform for during a volleyball league as well. And it actually did very well. The issue with football as a sport with fantasy doesn't go that well hand in hand compared to a, say, cricket or a football or a few other sports or even, say, a kabaddi is that you know, the chances of a goal happening because a lot of things is actually built on their final result. So in football, you might have a one goal, two goal, three goals maximum, I'm thinking on an average, right? So a lot of times the whole element or the matrix in which a fantasy kind of works does not kind of become that much uh, amenable to how probably a cricket kind of work because obviously you are selecting your team and all those things plus the runs which are scored or right. points which are scored. So that's where football as a sport uh, in terms of fantasy, it becomes a little, uh, uh, you know, less favorable. Uh, though at a FIFA level, at a, say an, uh, a, a gaming level, it, it is obviously very big. And that's why, you know, you have these FIFA competitions happening online where people go and participate. So that's a, uh, how do I say, a little more, uh, I would say a little different than from a pure fantasy uh, sport level. Uh, thirdly, with the advent of all Instagram, Twitter, everything, now it is very much popular, uh, I mean, yeah, I would say easier to kind of try and make stars out of at least a couple of players because people can come out with their views, come out with, you know, supporting them or agreeing or not agreeing with them. Uh, and so you can start building a, a, a kind of a fan following base for yourself. Uh, that is at one level. The other level, what we personally feel from, say, from a management agency side, we feel with Indian football per se, somewhere down the line, I also feel players are equally responsible that they have not marketed themselves well. Uh, and again, 
barring a side say a shetri or a or a bechan bhutia what has stopped a lot of other guys from doing stuff like you yourself said like in this uh, uh, you know the recently held uh, championship we had uh, you know the other guys doing well but somewhere down the line they don't have that and indian football per se is still operating like a mom and pop shop so a player agent is some someone's brother someone's friend ki chalo okay look into my uh, this thing they are more bothered about oh can i get you of this deal done with that club okay let me make few bucks on that and that's it so the fact of the matter is if you don't follow the entire ecosystem so if you see a cricket or as say a badminton there are you know professional guys who are managing their affairs and i'm to say nirav does or nirav swam does it for so many other uh, uh, you know athletes across different sports we also do that so you need to have that we've tried uh, initially and we realized that it's a mess the whole football uh, the player management thing is a mess uh, because there are no Uh, how do i say uh, uh, professional guys i would say there are hardly professional guys who are getting into it or have gotten into it so a lot of times that also kind of adds uh, or has limited people from becoming stars or marketed well and that's where you start creating icons so a great point to hen and if i may come in uh, you know i think debian was worried about you know too many agreements it's very difficult to have a bunch of you know six or seven indian panelists and not too many disagreements so i'm going to play a little bit of a devil's advocate and i think you know while digital media is important uh, i think a uh, media by its bootstraps can't pull up a sport that's you know relegated to the bottom of people's attention and as a marketer for a long time i think if i just look at your single point agenda of how does one revive football in india and more specifically how does one revive football in delhi you know where it's relegated to in consequence i think the key element is to look at what the premier kabaddi league uh, you know did right they didn't take a 10 year view they didn't take a 20 year view they basically you know got a company that was interested in creating a media property uh, you know they got equity sponsorship uh, equity from a you know a big time television network star in this case and then they got together and created a kind of a league and one of the key elements that drives attention world over specifically indians is getting celebrities involved right so it's really about you know pulling out five or six teams packed with some corporate sponsorship but more importantly giving them a big celebrity mascot right so bollywood in india's case is the big thing right so each of the kabaddi teams there were more people who wanted to watch pune play kabaddi because it was owned by aishwarya rai or whatever uh, because hey that that brings the whole glamour component in and i say with any sport you know the moment you market it and you bring the little bit of glam quotient that bumps it up right this was long before twitter but you know beckham was a big star in his own right and then hey beckham married victoria like you know posh spice and you know his his kind of celebrity value doubled right uh, so my point is that how does one get you know let indian football delhi football leverage from the power of celebrities and therefore to my you know my kind of uh, you know thought would be to leave with the delhi football uh, association is how do you kind of recreate bring larger interest bring corporate interests delhi is a great seat for government you know big bodies like the the the, the crpf the jnu a lot of you know great institutions are here can they be persuaded to put up sides on a small delhi football league can you get a big bollywood stars or whatever back this up and then can you get a big media company that then at least you know, telecast this games every you know every weekend or whatever so it kind of slowly builds a culture of people actually following identifying stars and then of course the last big value is you know again using the premier kabaddi Kab- Kab- league in the ipl format is getting a couple of global stars that kind of pulls the whole game up by its bootstraps it suddenly gets noticed right so when you get you know one or two global stars who show up per side it suddenly lifts the sport so i think it's it's a 360 degree view you know but the glamour quotient and possibly getting bollywood which is you know indian euphemism for glamour is a great way to actually build pull some pull some eyeballs and pull some attention and it'll possibly get a whole different side of brands who're not just looking at the positive side of sport uh lifestyle brands uh, you know you know kind of fashion brands they will also start looking at the sport and that's something that uh, you know that the football delhi folks should seriously think about yeah so just to add uh, i'm just uh, kind of uh, sorry to say that i disagree with lloyd on this aspect of it Uh, which is uh, with respect to and i take the examples of kabaddi and uh, football so the issue or i would say the opportunity with kabaddi was there was no uh, a base comparison which was there right so the primary uh, task at that point in time when they started was 
how do they get people to watch kabaddi at the because it was happening at such a grand level on television so obviously they had the bollywood stars and they had the 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 works who all associated with different teams or are at the central level and obviously people kind of started to come and start watching kabaddi on tv with football the issue is a completely different uh, stuff because with all due respect to isl they have they did not leave any bollywood star any top athlete of this country i'm talking with the biggest of the athletes to be not to be associated with them they had a team owner they had this thing uh, or at a you know at a what to say at a corporate level they were kind of involved with isl the issue with isl per se was and which uh, nirav also mentioned in his uh, initial remark was the quality of football so here at kabaddi was a different uh, task called together because you just your main aim was to get people to watch it here i have got people to come and tune into isl but moment i see that uh, level of football being played there is just no uh, you know uh, kind of an attachment or affinity to that uh, you know uh, the the league per se so i would at a given uh, chance i would just skip channels and start watching that also when people say that oh you know what it the foreign leagues actually are killing isl it is also not really true because if you see it's not that epl gets some crazy ratings or bundesliga in india with all due respect or spanish league they get crazy ratings no they don't but the fact is the perception what they stand for you know so you have a niche audience a cult audience which keeps on watching those matches obviously i love watching a bundesliga or a epl or spanish league but i am a sucker for good sport but at an isl level or at an indian football level we need to do something and again if we filter it down to a state level which is to delhi how do i now start, start generating interest because i am at say at my and sorry to use the word at my bottom level how do i start and revise things probably we have to look at smaller uh, formats probably you have to look at futsal probably we have to look at a mixed kind of a format a um, boys and girls combined you know five a side six side something to start you know generating interest and not look at uh, having a full fledged uh, match happening with 11 players each just look at five players six players each at a grassroots level that's at one secondly at a sponsor level as we were talking earlier we will not have people because here marketing heads or ceos probably might not be there for 3 years or 5 years or 10 years then it all boils boils down to at owner level yes your owner can take a call so mr munjal can take a call because he's the owner of the company he doesn't have to you know worry about the other aspects so you will have to look for those kind of people so jsw in that sense is a classic example they've invested in football it is done at an owner level so obviously they don't have to worry about rois and all those things and they are ready to build that so if you see what they've done with bangalore they've done an amazing job i mean i think it's a case study in itself but then do we have something similar at a delhi level where we need an owner or the other aspect could be let's look at companies three four companies and i'm talking about delhi football association uh, stand point of view look at three four companies and get them to invest through csr money so every company has to spend the csr money you tie up with academies try and build that so that whole roi level concept the the whole fear i would say which a marketing head or a brand head or a ceo would have that probably is mitigated to the 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 maximum possible and you can start building something from a scratch at a grassroots level so those are my two bits yeah so tohin is the bring the uh, yeah i, I would ahead. like to add on tohin is absolutely right in uh, in the approach but uh, at the end of the day you know you need one big umbrella club which is your iconic uh, you know platform for people of that city to look at of course the academies are very very important and everything is important which comes under this club umbrella so we need to i mean we had a big opportunity with delhi dynamos there was den network and i think gms uh, took over and then i think again i'm going back to the government side of it i don't know why the state government is not being involved uh you know the delhi football first go to should be to you know arvind kejriwal and and his team to get and say like you know we got the biggest sport in the world and delhi as a capital doesn't have an isl team i mean the team has gone to odisha we need to we need to first of all have a big team of course backed by the government backed by say four corporates as, as you know or by csr or by the regular channel of a 10 year plan and under that create a whole ecosystem you know i mean that that entire club model it can be one or two clubs also 
I mean, I think we have we have some sixty seven clubs in Delhi, which I was I was uh, there are some eighteen clubs in senior division. There are some forty clubs in in or sixty clubs. Uh, with with due respect, but you know, I mean, what is what is the structure and and the value over there? We we need to have a consolidated effort by everyone to to have one major umbrella club which becomes a platform, and also to get big India matches. uh isl matches uh you know big tournaments maybe organize a delhi cup uh you know which is the biggest uh, tournament to showcase and, and we it's it's by invitation get a mohan bagan east bengal um, uh, you know i mean now it is mohan bagan atk and and i mean you know all mumbai fc everyone involved and get a ranbir kapoor to come to delhi because he's involved with mumbai fc and so on so so platform creation is something which is which should be the key i think Yeah, I think uh, the comment I was about to make is that Tuhin is uh, bringing up topics which can make for an entire different discussion on their own. You know, new formats of football, or even reimagining uh, things like fantasy, or even gaming. That's that's something that's coming up in a big way. But we'll we'll stick to the the topic on hand and just uh, bringing the discussion forward uh, over to Sidhan and then to Pair as well. Uh, we had the under 17 uh, world cup fifa world cup in 2017 and anybody who believes that delhi cannot produce crowds obviously didn't watch the matches because we had a packed jawaharlal nehru stadium for every game and not just when india were playing even when india got knocked out and there was a round of 16 game so clearly there is an appetite for that quality of football there are some events coming up as well next year uh, we have the under 17 women's world cup we have the 2023 uh, asian uh, women's uh, asian cup as well and aiff has also put in a bid for the 2027 asian cup so there are some potentially huge huge events which can come up in the future and just from the brand's perspective how have you followed the uh, the success or the uh, aftermath of the previous under 17 world cup and what would you say you know are the exciting prospects ahead especially from a delhi football perspective uh so you know i think even you know i was actually just just going back to the start of this conversation right and i think you know it was it was quite unfortunate that we spoke about you know isl teams getting moved out of the capital because you know i, I remember during my time when i was managing uh, working very closely with the national football team like like you know when india won the nehru cup it was a packed house it was a sold out house so you know it so which meant that that there is appetite it's perhaps I, i'm not quite sure of of the reasons for it but but you know coming back coming back to your question i think Uh, from an under 17 standpoint i think uh, I, i think i from a just from a brand marketing point of view right the the energy that was created by the government themselves i think was really good i think they did a tremendous job and kudos to that to, to really kind of you know make sure that this is stands out and and i just i think i think the overall package of the entire tournament was really good because that's where the scouts come in that's where the talent is discovered that's where you know you get more and more opportunities and you know and and yeah i mean i think even from from a performance standpoint i'm, I'm not going to have any any comments on that from a national team because that's obviously something that's very very new in nature and i think it's only going to get better from here on from a brand marketing standpoint i feel that opportunities like this should not be let go of that journey should continue and the reason i'm saying it is because you know from a business model standpoint right i see i see i see like a almost like a pyramid right you kind of at the top level you create inspiration for your consumer with the national team with your under 17 team with the women's team and you create those targeting from a secondary level you create those engagements with your state football team that's where your delhi your bangalore your calcutta your goa will come in right and then from an enablement standpoint right that's that's where you create these grassroots level tournaments so it's these three levels of of connections that you have to establish right and that's where i feel that uh, from a post world cup scenario i feel there is a lot of opportunity i mean i mean ideally we there there was option to continue that entire journey it's not about making the next bid it's about what happened to the previous talent where are they going you know what is their journey going to be and if they are coming into the national team what have they gone through who is telling their story and that is what a brand marketer will want to do like like you know if and that's 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 the authentic piece right going through their journeys i only heard their stories during the world cup i never heard their stories after the world cup so these are those uh, finer moments which which we as marketers we look forward to that taps into the you know the pulse of the consumer oh my god this person's story has been so authentic who's come in from who did not have infrastructure who did not have any access to sport but still is representing the country it's unbelievable you know so that's where the emotion comes in 
Yeah, Pair, just uh, throwing the same question to you as well. We know that, you know, the cynical perspective of hosting FIFA events, especially at, you know, junior age group level, it's probably more given as a handout in exchange for votes. That's what the popular <laughs> perception is. But purely from an Indian football perspective, these are great opportunities. These are great avenues for which, uh, you know, the kind of exposure which our uh, young boys and girls will probably never get otherwise. So how can Indian football tap in on these, not just from the performances on the field, but off the field and the, the goodwill generated, the sort of uh, fandom which is generated, even if for a brief while, as Siddhant mentioned? Um, I mean, first and foremost, looking at uh, uh, what India uh, put together for the U17 World Cup, I think the let's say the 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 um, the eyes of the football world, let's say, not from you know the the, the general person in, in Europe, but from the from the fo football interested or, or avid fans, were in India, and I think the world was very let's say very stunned by uh, what was what was delivered. Not stunned that. You know the world would have never expected that India can't do it, not at all. Rather, like wow, that, that's they, they put together really a great, great event, a great tournament. And even I mean, on the pitch, I think the the Indian U17 team was uh, quite, let's say, was quite strong. And I saw also some very strong results afterwards. I think when they were playing, I think it was Serbia or you know, in in, in additional um, uh, youth events uh, where we, uh, where people said, wow, that's uh, that's really a strong generation uh, coming up. I mean, we all know that, you know, it, it's, it, it's a completely different story playing in the youth and then making it to, to, to the senior teams. Um, but if, if we, and I would, uh, I would always recommend and, and I would always, um, yeah, uh, heavily recommend to, to try to, to, to get those kind of uh, uh, events also in the future, because it not only gives you exposure uh, during the event, uh, but also helps you to build and to restructure your infrastructure, to create local, uh, uh, let's say, local excitement. And I would also like, I know I, I spoke a lot about Bundesliga in Germany, but you know, that, that's what I, I know most about. But if, if, if we look at Germany and then the interest for football uh, pre-2006 and nowadays, it completely changed. I mean, in, 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 the, in the 90s and even in the early 2000s, uh, football was still uh, was still the, by far the, the the most relevant sports in Germany, but it was more like let's say for the for the average people and and and, and uh, mainly men going to the stadium, like men you know with an average age of uh, uh, like end of thirties, etc. And nowadays, if you look at the stadium, you have women, you have kids, you have VIPs, you have uh, standing stands, you have family blocks. You know, you have an average to the society. You have lots of uh, uh, seats at, or places for handicapped persons. You have even the uh, seats for blind people with the with the extra uh, reporter who's who's doing the the live reporting. So all this was developed on the back of the 2006 World Cup. So therefore, even even my mom's interested in football right now. Beforehand, not at all. So and this is for me kind of a good indicator that the every everyday p person. Um, uh, you know, got really touched by by what happened 14 years ago, and that that was lasting, or it's still it's still lasting until today. So therefore, I think major events can have a major role uh, for the local football development, and therefore, I think it's highly relevant to to also do um, you know something uh, uh, about it or around it uh, in the future as well. And as Sidant uh, correctly pointed out, um, I think it gives also a lot of opportunities to 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 write stories. Uh, not only during the event and not maybe only, you know, the one or two weeks before the event starts. You can, you can start the roadmap much, much earlier and you can even take it, uh, take it into the, uh, let's say, uh, after years as well. And uh, therefore, from, from my point of view, um, especially when it comes to sports which are not that developed, like cricket is in, in India, for example, I think it's, 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 it's uh, has some Advantages, but also disadvantages. Obviously, disadvantages uh, because we are not in the same stage. But advantages that you have much more to offer for 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 commercial partners um, who are really interested to build something long term. I think Lloyd said it in the beginning. It's it's difficult for companies who have to you know report every other quarter and, and say uh, how do your sponsoring activities go. Um, and then, then it's then it's, uh, it's it's a different uh, it's, it's a tricky story. But if I don't know Pepsi or OnePlus or whoever would decide to be the one, the facilitator of building uh, or grassroots and 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 helping uh, developing football in in India, maybe 
as a whole or maybe in daily or maybe in, 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 in one particular state that can create a, a, a big impact. And um, from my point of view, and that's always, you know, uh, important to, to, to keep in mind, um, they, um, I think the, let's say, the, then the football authorities need to be aware that they can't, let's say, generate a fortune in cash and still expect the, the, the brand to help them grow. Uh, I think then it's more like a, uh, maybe a value in kind business or so. But, you know, if, 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 if then the, the sponsor could do something long-term and could profit, both parties can profit, from that, and you can be a, 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 a early mover. Um, then uh, there are two two uh, sides winning, and uh, that's definitely that's definitely the case. And we have seen some of those um, ideas in, in, for example, in Germany as well. When, uh, for example, like beach beach volleyball was you know was close to nothing before a, f a few uh, corporate partners decided to 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 uh, make it uh, into the um, oh to, to to invest into beach volleyball. Uh, they could even convince uh, a media station, a free-to-air broadcaster in Germany, to to start broadcasting it. It's been it's been, I, you know, 15 years ago. Or so, but they they laid the foundation for a heavy interest uh, of Germans in, uh, in in beach volleyball today. Beach volleyball. I mean, this is kind of a niche sport, but um, they, they that's really you know one of those great examples where corporate sponsors took over, said we want to invest long term. I think all those contracts were at least five years or even more. And then the outcome will obviously not uh, 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 be uh, materialized after the second quarter <laughs> to report to your shareholders, but you can you can report uh, a great success you, if you do it the right way, uh, or if both parties do it the right way uh, uh, after one, two, three, or four years. Well, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, just to add, they might copy what Delhi football could also look at is that, and I was just thinking uh, while uh, Pair was you know, uh, talking and very valid point what he mentioned, was that probably Delhi football can also look at taking a leadership role in developing women, women football, right? Because women football globally, again, is really going through leaps and bounds. And in India, incidentally, as we, I'm sure we all are aware, that our ranking, a FIFA ranking in women is much better than the men. Uh, so, it technically means that you know, if we can develop that, uh, that and also as a state association, because again, we are talking about a national and at a state level, at a state level, if Delhi football can take that initiative or take that leadership role, that they are the pioneers in developing women football in India. And suddenly, you know, there could be a, a, a new force which might just kind of uh, uh, be with them and try and create a, a difference in the football scenario in our country. And, you know, then you can have offshoots with men and everything as well, because obviously that's work in progress. Men football, I'm not saying immediately men football per se, but I'm saying there's a new category that can be developed. It can be at a niche level, but it can go very fast. And you would also have a lot of sponsors who would love to uh, kind of support women football, women empowerment, a lot of things which cannot come with it. Yeah, we're into the last 10 minutes of this discussion. And in fact, many of those questions, I'm sure, will be raised in the session which follows, which my friend and colleague uh, Sharda Ugra will be hosting. That's on the importance of women's football development. So I would urge all of you as well to be a part of it and whoever's watching uh, also to uh, stand in. So now that we have just about 10 minutes to go, uh, closing comments, I'll, I'll begin with you, Lloyd. So the message is sort of, uh, it seems quite unanimous that uh, it's, it's a good time in Indian football. There are lots of positive things happening, but in many respects, the energy of activation, as we learned in science, is quite high. So we need to reach there. And for that, everybody needs to pull in the same direction. It's, it's a pretty uphill trudge in many ways. And even the sponsors have to be quite patient in, in many respects. Thanks, Devan. I think, uh, you know, you know just, just one of the points that came through with, uh, with, with what Pear was saying, uh, I think it's important to recognize, uh, you know, in terms of sponsors, how do you how do you make the sport, whether it's a national level or whether it's a daily level, attractive to sponsors? And I think uh, one of the key points there is to recognize that you know if you look at the all the sports in the country, cricket is a high involvement, high expense sport. Right? If you're a brand and you want to make some degree of involvement with cricket, barring for buying you know a commercial spot on IPL or any cricket match, you've got to put in big bucks, right? You're talking of a threshold of at least a couple of million dollars before you can afford to be a legitimate cricket sponsor and make some impact in consumers' minds. I think it's important to recognize that football for now can take the value of being a much smaller uh, snack size for a brand, right? So you don't have to put in those two, three, four million dollars 
what you can do is pretty much get down at a very entry level, right? So whether it's through a league, whether it's through a team, whether it's through a couple of stars, they can come to you at a fraction of the cost. So I think that part is something that you know, needs to get across. And that's how uh, all the administrators of football need to start marketing the aspect. The second point, and I think with two uh, panelists who are from the sports marketing fraternity, Nirav and Tuhin, I think is also very well said is about how does one build out the stories? It's not just about you know, Shetri and, you know, Baitung Bhuti at one point in time, it's how does one really get a little bit more of the stories? And, you know, I mean, for me, the great learning, you know, I saw kind of cricket uh, you know, evolved in a sense through my uh, stint at Pepsi, is that today brands are willing to pay a lot more for a celebrity, not just for his presence on the field or his guarantee to be in the national side, but also for his overall presence on digital media. Right. So how does one help get the other guys have good personal digital profiles, get their Twitter more active, you know, given inside comments, their takes on great league games that happen elsewhere in the world, on the EPL, on international tournaments. I think one doesn't see enough of that. So can one exploit the digital potential of, of football, both individual stars and you know, teams around the country? The third part, which I should think would be a good takeaway for uh, for, for the Delhi uh, uh, the football Delhi is really how do you really get you know corporate sponsorships, right? And I think uh, Tuhin made a great point. Maybe it could start with five side games getting corporates actually involved, but then therefore getting the whole ecosystem geared up, right? Does Delhi have a great inter-school tournament? Can it have a great five side corporate tournament? I think these are areas where football will at least enter the consciousness of of the corporates who see the opportunity and see how they can grow. So these are any thoughts that I'd like to leave on the table as we go forward. Thank you. Uh, Nirav, for you, would it be fair to say that uh, it's very important for you to see a team from Delhi in uh, the ISL or the top division at some stage? Yeah, of course. I mean, you need something to look up to and, you know, I so that is very, very important. But I see there is a huge, huge opportunity with the right, uh, with the right team of people, you know, coming together with the right approach uh, and the right narrative. So I see a huge, huge, big opportunity for Delhi football. Uh, Tuhin, your, your final thoughts? You'll have to unmute first. I agree with what Nirav uh, mentioned earlier as well, which is that we do uh, need to have a team. And I'm talking at a, at a state level, that's why. We do, uh, really do need to have a team where people can back that. The best part about it that why we all are discussing this is that we all realize there's a potential. We all know there's infrastructure as well. So we cannot complain about these two things. There's, what we need to do is that we need something to look up to. And that is something, a, a, a kind of a trigger that we need to have. And if you're able to create that, I'm sure a lot of things will fall in place. Fair, uh, I'll ask you about this. Uh, you know, what can Bundesliga International in a way contribute to this journey of uh, both Indian football as well as Football Delhi going forward? And in a sense, what would you expect in return? So what we could uh, offer is definitely help in terms of building a vision, uh, even though that's always something many people speak about and, and sometimes sometimes it's fluffy. But I think we have shown that in the past we were able to, to, to build that kind of vision for uh, not only, let's say, national success or international success on a highest level, but also for the grassroots. Uh, I mean, if, if you look at the uh, the German Football Association, it's the biggest sports association in the world, with more than 7 million uh, uh, people organized in that organization. Uh, and uh, they are organizing, I think, more than 120,000 uh, uh, matches, uh, so clubs, only clubs each year. Anyhow, so we, we can bring a lot to the table to, 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 to build that vision, but also to make it, to make it uh, live. Uh, to, to bring it to life because that's I think key uh, uh, no one really uh, let's say has ever succeeded with a bunch of PowerPoint slides it's all about uh, uh, bringing this to life and we are, we are more than happy to to to, to help yeah you know, I think to a certain degree we are currently doing so but uh, I mean there's always uh, opportunity to do more and what can we offer in return or what would we expect in return I mean we would expect or not expect we would hope that even more people would uh, uh, be interested uh, into Bundesliga uh, and uh, watch and tune in in order to uh, help us grow on a brand, help our partner uh, grow. And um, yeah, I can only encourage uh, Football Daily to, to, to set up this kind of vision uh, in order to make everybody, you know, uh, looking into the same direction and um, have it uh, or make it a long term plan so that uh, um, people are really um, uh, trying to, to, to bring it uh, to life sustainably. That's, that's, that's definitely key.
And Siddhant, uh, the rest of us are probably the ideas men on this forum. You're the one with the money bags in many respects. So uh, what you've heard over the last 90 minutes, has that enthused you? And has it given you some good ideas moving forward about, you know, how, how you think brands can associate with uh, football? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, from a, from a, like I said, so I've been on both sides of this, right? So, so from, you know, uh, uh, even from a brand standpoint, right? Uh, from a OnePlus standpoint, I can say that, you know, uh, 60% of our social followers, right? Uh, they, they're basically, you know, uh, 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 their social interests lie in football as well. And they're also interested in, in the top big clubs as well. There are a lot of similarities. Right from a, from a, from even from a brand standpoint, because we know how are we targeting these consumers, right? Uh, and and a second level of all of this is that uh, they, these consumers are based in top cities like Delhi and Bangalore, right, and Mumbai. So so it's also just finding those similarities and creating that kind of sharper focus within Delhi in itself. So it's not just about what a brand wants to do, but it's also about the Delhi State Association understanding what will a brand need and offering that package to them. So, so which means statistics and data analytics become very important. Why should a brand invest in Delhi, right? And what will it benefit them? Is it a consumer first brand? Is it a digital first brand? Is it a brand that needs a CSR angle? Whatever the answer may be, or is it a brand that needs a women's lens? Whatever. So that packaging has to happen from the state association to the brand versus the other way around. Otherwise, the agenda will never, otherwise there'll be two different visions. That's that's basically my, my, my closing remarks on this. So from the look of things, uh, hopefully soon we'll have a one plus uh, Delhi football team, which will play in the ISL, which will also have a five side and women's team. It'll have some celebrity co-owners and it'll also have some strong partnerships with the Bundesliga. I think that'll make everybody on this panel <laughs> happy. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It has really been an enlightening chat and a, a great fun chat as well. And I hope that everybody who's listened in and also come away with some good ideas. Thanks, thanks to Football Delhi as well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye, bye, bye.